阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，世界各地的莲花童子们，大家早上好，午安，晚上吉祥。在我们等待我们的主持人上线之前呢，在这边先祝福大家，等下上课法喜充满。如啊，我们有今天我们是新的一个啊。教授的老师就是我们的五自在老师，所以呢，如果大家等下有什么疑问的话，可以到课程结束之后呢，大家才写上来，不要太早写，因为怕会看漏你们的信息，那就不是那么的好了，对吧？那么说到五自在老师呢，大家啊认识吗？那我先跟大家说一下吴志在老师的资历好吗？吴志在老师呢，他是二零零四年到二零一六年呢，他在中国政府中密教总会暨威德佛学院担任秘书长。那么大家应该知道，威德佛学院是在台湾雷藏市，也是暂时我们啊马政府中唯一的一个啊佛学院。他是在里面担任秘书长，非常的棒。然后，二零一四年呢，他获得自学硕士学位，哇，这个更厉害了。两年修完学分，论文写了两年才通过。二零一六年呢，他在南投创开创业，开设了新辉礼仪啊。然后，等下上课的时候，可能上司会告哎，啊，老师会告诉我们。二零一七年呢，考上了商礼服务一级技术士。那如果在台湾的同门就应该知道，这个是非常棒的。二零一八年呢，获内部内政部办法礼仪师职称证书。这个目前来说，在我们政府中是唯一的一位。然后吴志在老师呢，他有一个金句，就是说：生不能重来，死也不能重来。死亡是生命存在意义的具体呈现，往生就如同大车远行，往生者要大到哪一站，要怎样才能拿到车票，如何去我们想去的地方呢？要如何跟远行者告别祝福，让远行者安心，让自己放心？好。吴志在老师是真佛弟子，也是台湾生命礼仪师，经营一个跟世间、跟亲人好好说再见的惜别车站。在车站里，老师将协助大家演奏出自己生命的告别乐章。好的，所以呢，嗯。一下子哈，我的镜头忽然间出现很多东西。好的，那我想问一下啊，一才讲是我们的主持人出现了吗？出现了，哎，看到了一飞讲师。啊，好，那我就把棒子交给一飞讲师。阿弥陀佛，谢谢。阿弥陀佛，谢谢美儿助教。阿弥陀佛，大家好，我是这一节课的主持人莲花与飞讲师。来自台湾六度堂，今天是二零二四年的三月二十二日，星期五。今天是我们第五门课《生命礼仪》。呃，我们今天都是三语直播，请大家可以在任选择中文频道、印尼文频道或者是英文频道，也请大家在留言区，我们可以将您的提问发上来。有请美容助教帮我们收集我们的提问，再请我们授课导。是为我们一一的解答。感谢没有助教，刚刚已经介绍了，呃，吴志在老师的资历。是的，生与死就是轮回。佛说三法印中的诸行无常，诸法无我
涅盘极境，就是宇宙的定律法则，也是生命历史历程上不变的真理。我们嗯、呃、不会因为宗教信仰的不同而有所分别。就让我们从佛教的角度来看，当心亲友逝世时，眷属应该如何的来处理？我们首先跟。Just a bit late coming into this channel. I post the resume of、uh, Teacher Wu Zizai and his golden quote in the chat. 我们欢迎我们的教育处处长林赫上师。Let's welcome Mr. Lin Ha, Director of Education. So, um, our teacher for today. 余华助教，还有呃，本好助教、玄夫助教也上来了。丽华助教。So the master Lian Fei is saying hello to all the masters, all the reverends, senior reverends, reverends, dharma instructors, and dharma assistants, and fellow disciples online. Hello, everyone. 在呃 ，FB 或者 YouTube 呢，或者是在 Zoom 上面，也欢迎大家把你的提问发上来。请大家呃，在学习你的重点呢，也将你发在你的啊、呃、学习心得发上来，在我们 Fast App 的一个生命礼仪的群组当中，跟大家一起分享。最后跟大家说，请你打开视频，更改你的法号，方便授课导师还有大家。Can, um, share your learnings and sites um in the WhatsApp chat group that we set up. 第五门课生命礼仪第四章：王者家属。须知第一节：王者家属应该做的事情。即将开课。We're gonna start class soon. 欢迎大家加入在 WhatsApp 生命礼仪的群组，谢谢大家。We welcome everyone to join the WhatsApp chat group that we set up for this course. And、uh, we hope that everyone will register as a student、uh, on Tubra School and University. So, regardless of whether you're taking exams or not, all are welcome to this class. Let's settle down and prepare your stationaries. Amitabha, the lesson four. What the deceased family needs to go needs to know.、Um, class will start now. Let's first pay homage to a true Buddha lineage. Namo Bhagavan. Namo Buddha Lakana. Namo Amitabha. Namo Padmakumarama. Namo Living Buddha Lineages. We visualize a grandmaster reading light on us. Let's form the Padmakumarama mudra and recite the heart mantra of. <coughs> Rulenich Guru, Om Guru Lich City Home, 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 Om Guru Lich City Home. Meet up, everyone. First, let's welcome our teacher for today. Uh, teacher Wu Zizai, Director of Medical, Director of Education, Master Lian He,、uh, Master Li Jue, Master Lian Jia, Master Lian Fei, and all Master Senior Reverends, Reverends, Dharma Instructors, Dharma Assistants, and all Padma Kumaras from all over the world. Tashi Tali, Tashi Tali, everyone.、Uh, now we、we'll、just. We will first play a short introductory video of Teacher Wu Zizai. What is journey to becoming a, a live ethical master? Yeah, Chen Jun Bang Bang. Is 2016. Started by Chen Jun Bang Bang. 
So you can look at his. Uh, so he started um, this funeral planning company in 2016. So the story. Um, so he's done mostly for two Buddha disciples. So these are the ones which he can, which um, Tisha Uzasa has helped. Um, and yeah, a funeral preparation and his role as a life ethical master. So in addition, there are also hundreds of two bitter disciples and also the family members whom he has helped to plan um, the funeral. And this question is why did he become a funeral plan planner? He said because he was um, he's a secretary general and uh, the true Buddha school for a long time. He realized that a lot of uh, the my brother's sister was cultivated for a long time and they were not able to follow the teachings of Grandmaster to um, complete um, the uh, rebirth process. And it's always because the um, conventional funeral planners are not familiar with the true Buddha school uh, process in Sajanas. So if there's no professional who's helping from the side, they miss the, uh, to go to eight hours. And it was a regret of a lifetime for the family members. And most conventional funeral, uh, funeral uh, planners, they are not able to understand the environment that needed or the processes needed to help them in this process. So he feel that there's a need for him to um, uh, to feel the missing piece, to feed the missing piece. So he learned, um, he, he went to take classes um, and he He's to get him uh, get himself certified as a funeral um, planner. Though his company was in um, as in Nanto, it was registered in Nanto, but actually his business is um, all over Taiwan. So he's integrated a true Buddha, uh, uh, true Buddha's good tantric dharma into the funeral process, and in Grandmaster other days we all. Uh, so from Grandmaster uh, earlier books, we can see that Grandmaster often helped um, true Buddha disciples and devotees um, on geomancy, uh, on burial grounds, on choosing the right burial grounds, and all kind of funeral related um, practices and process. So from the time uh, Grandmaster started the True Buddha School, um, uh, the call is a lib liberation and to see your true self. But again, his teachings are not uh, separated from the topic of life and death. So after having executed so many um, uh, cases, whether it's um, Chaobis, Sutrayana, or Tantrayana, um, I think uh, the tantric practices, um, it blends in just nicely with the traditional uh, funeral um, processes. I can truly say that what Grandmaster has taught are the true Buddha tantric dharma. All his teachings are very suitable to be used in any Chinese uh, funerals. But again, there's still room for development. I've take, taken refuge in the Jew uh, in Grandmaster uh, since I was young, since I was very young. It's been tw 37 years C. And in uh, the role business, I've been doing it for eight years. Um, I will look at how other federal planners. Um, used the funeral um, funeral planning process to, sorry. So there are many areas 
of improvement Uh, from the very basic to the more detailed, including choosing a date, you know, preventing clashes. There are many, many topics which um, we can use the true Buddha tantric Dharma to integrate into this funeral planning. And because of uh, my affinity and uh, during funeral planning, I've, I've uh, many, many, I love many to know the true Buddha uh, Tantra better. Note that the practices that we have will soothe the minds of, of the family members. So that's all for today. Um, yeah. So let's keep um, 8888 to thank uh, teacher Wu Zizai. Thank you for being the teacher for this, um, for this course. So let's invite uh, teacher Wu Zizai. Hello, everyone. First of all, let's um, put a palm together. Pay homage to the root lineage kind of living Buddha Lianxian. The triple, the triple uh, three jewels of the shrine. Or Buddha's Bodhisattvas of the shrine. Homage to all Dharma protectors of the true Buddha school. May we may we be blessed that this class be um, may this class be blessed and the uh, true Buddha Tantra reach all parts of the world. So, to the Honorable Master Chen Chu, Master Lian He, Master Lian Yue, Master Lian Xia, Master Lian Fei. All masters, senior reverends, reverends, dharma instructors, dharma sisters, and our dear Padma Kumaras from all over the world. Hello, everyone. I am Wu Zizai. Thank you for joining us for the class. I would like to first thank uh, Master Lian Hao for inviting me um, to teach this course. I would like to also thank uh, Jupiter School Online University, the, um, all the uh, working team, and also the Master of Ceremony team, uh, demonstrator Yifei Jiang Si, the translators for Bahasa Indonesia, uh, demonstrator uh, Mei Li, and also myself, Yijia. And preparing this uh, course, I feel that all the uh, volunteers for the True Buddha School Online Universities, because of the effort, they are able to uh, learn a lot and um, I also feel that our education uh, in future will be an energetic one, the education progress. So this is article of life. Um, this is lesson four. So this is chapter four. Uh, what the deceased family need to know. Uh, just now in the uh, short introductory video, <clears throat> we'd like to share a story about a Indonesian sister, Xiao Wan Yi. This Dhamma sister was one of the older disciples who supported Grandmaster. 
when he was very difficult in his earliest days in the United States. When she was traveling in Taiwan, uh, she had a illness and died in Taiwan. And the daughter felt very helpless. And at that point of time was ready and the uh, funeral planning business and I helped arrange her uh, funeral from chanting, from chanting uh, till her uh, cremation. And I also helped in other areas like uh, the families travel to Taiwan, translation and notarization of documents and bring the urn back to Indonesia. So in between there are a lot of documents in, involved. Um, we, and I have to, yeah, he has to, because when, when the sister, Dama sister came, didn't have a lot of these papers with her. So I have to uh, get all these paper documents from Indonesia. And because she was an old disciple who supported Grandmaster a lot, so when Grandmaster heard of her death, she instructed the abbot master Lian Che of Taiwan Lei Zhang Si uh, to, to remove a, tra uh, a dragon robe worn by Grandmaster from the treasure trove at the temple. Can you imagine if you retrieve something from the treasure trove, the true Buddha school treasure trove, it must be something that is quite exceptional. An instructor, instruction from Grandmaster was uh, the dragon rope has to be worn at burial and cremated with the coffin. And I was equally um, um, shocked <clears throat> because Grandmaster earlier dragon ropes has, uh, has, been signed, has been signed by him, on, has been signed by Grandmaster. And they are kept, and it's kept at the treasure trove of Taiwan Lei Zhang Si. I think it's, it is worth at least 1 million Taiwan dollars. So whatever, whatever instructions Grandmaster said we will follow. So the story, um, I find that this is something that's very important. And especially when I just entered the funeral planning business, <clears throat> Grandmaster want to give a great blessing for this um to for this to this Dhamma sister. So there's definitely a meaning behind these actions. <clears throat> Let's start a class. Superface. So in his literary uh literary a collection, Living Buddha mentioned that Buddha has already stated in uh, the Buddhist scriptures, nature is a cycle of existence. Birth and death is a massive samsaric cycle. And Buddha said there are three Dharma cells, the impermanence of all phenomena, all phenomena are without an independent self, Nirvana is perfect tranquility. Are uh, the laws of the universe? Is an absolute truth which cannot be altered in one's journey in life. Um, this truth exists and is always present in the material world and does not change at all, regardless of one's religious beliefs. As such, let's let us look at how, from the perspective of Buddhism, how families should face and handle death when their loved ones pass on. The purpose of the 84,000 types of practices in Buddhism is to enable sentient beings to see clearly through the illusory world so that sentient beings will relieve themselves of attachments and embark, embark on a cultivation journey of truth. Sengsi Liu Zhuan de Zi Ran Ding Yu. 
，纵然是令人深感无奈。So when it's to understand the reunions and separation between people, the results of karmic connections from the past, everything in the universe goes through the process of formation, dwelling, perishing, and diminishing. Birth and death is a natural law of the universe. Though we are helpless towards such phenomena, uh, we have to face them with a peaceful, peaceful heart. So if you can recognize the process of life experiences as a journey, a journey with a beginning and an end. Then, as the relatives and friends of the deceased,、uh, we should be be the respectful and warm farewell during their final stop in the world. So, a living Buddha Liangsheng once said during his Dharma teachings, he said, "As long as the family of the deceased rides to the true Buddha Ritman Quarter to seek the deliverance for the deceased, the Buddha's Bodhisattvas will guide the deceased to pure land. If the deceased is a true Buddha disciple, the deceased will be brought." By a takini to living Buddha Liangshan for deliverance, to be reborn in Maha Twin Lotus Pond. So this ultimate and final deliverance is the care that living Buddha Liangshan shows towards his disciple. Yeah, I would just like to uh, uh, just add on a few important points. And Grandmaster mentioned that as long as you write in or can send the facts, so、uh, or you can fax. Last time we used to write in, now you can、uh, fax, or you can go through someone you know, a disciple,、uh, someone you know, like a, a, a reverend, to fax、uh, the details of、uh, the deceased to to Grandmaster. So that's、um, form、uh, which I have, I have a link which I've shared in the WhatsApp chat group for the article of life. So it can also be a physical.、Uh, it can be a fax. It can be an online submission. It,、uh, or a written、uh, request. If a fellow disciple tell us that someone is passed on, uh, this this links, and, uh, this information are very very important. So anyone who is uh has to deal with um deal with uh funeral planning. Has to be aware of this contact details. So even if you are not a、um, disciple who's taken refuge, you can still fax over the request. So of course,、uh, our grandmaster will still deliver you.、Uh, but of course, the best would be you take refuge. So as long as you have an affinity with grandmaster, he will deliver you. Uh, why do you think this information, this contact details, are very important? I would like to、uh, share a story with you. So this Dharma sister、uh, was always helping people with、uh, funeral planning, with chanting. But when her husband suddenly passed away,、uh, she wasn't expecting this at all. She totally became disorganized, and she even forgot the fax number. And it was only until、uh, so she wasn't able to get anything done, and people on the site help her、uh, to settle the、uh, funeral of her husband, and I help. It wasn't until two or three days later, when all the major events had been settled,、uh, that she. She returned to normal. She told me at that point of time, her mind was in a total blank. She couldn't think of anything at all, and she didn't know what to do next as well. So,、uh, if someone close to your loved ones pass away suddenly, 
It's quite natural for you to forget. So the story tells me, tells us that when something like this happened to your family members, you will usually panic and you're not able to do with what you're supposed to do. Um, so I would suggest that um, it is best to have professional help at times of these, even though you may be familiar with the process during normal days or assistance, uh, seek assistance from experienced masters, reverends, or fellow disciples who will guide you along. So this is the importance of why you should have people uh, like the masters, reverends, or fellow disciples who are familiar with this process uh, with you, besides you to deal with unexpected, uh, unexpected deaths of your loved one. So when we send the facts uh, to US, uh, make sure that the information that you send to um, um, the US, it's, um, it's, it's um, complete. So it should have things Yo. like your name, your surname, uh, your address, your date of birth, uh, even your zodiac sign, where is the place that you're doing the chanting, Probably this could be the funeral parlor. So this way, the the Buddhas and Buddhist Sabha can uh, bless the deceased. So you can't just say that. Oh, can I ask? Can I pray for Grandmaster to to re, uh, to bless my father? Full stop. I mean, um, Grandmaster wouldn't know, right? You have to give a name, and if ever. I, if, if you can't, uh, if you didn't indicate any of these details, a photo would be good too. Uh, you should prepare all this information in advance. So prepare all this inf in, uh, important information at hand, including the photograph. So in Grandmaster's book, uh, Crossing the Ocean of Life and Death, um, Grandmaster pointed out that before a person's rebirth, after death, they rely on something formed from a subtle substance to sustain themselves. And this is the soul or the butter body, which is also sometimes known as the intermediate state. In Buddhist, uh, it, the Buddhist term is the bado body. And there's also an intermediate state. So it's just called a... So there's also a um, Dharma for the liberation of the battle body. It is mentioned that the Tantrayana and Sutrayana place emphasis on the practice of the Dharma for the liberation of the battle body. So this is more detailed in the Vajjana. So this refers to the liberation of the battle body of a dying person. So the body body will remain for about 49 days. So within this 49 days after death, this period is extremely, extremely important. So the liberation uh, demo practices are properly applied. The body body will have a better chance when facing and crossing the ocean of life and death and be reborn in a radiant, calm, peaceful, and uh, beautiful realm. So let's talk about the um, golden eight hours. This is actually the final care at the end of life. Two Buddha schools actually publish a book specially dedicated to the, um, the golden eight hours. It has very clear explanations and detailed instructions on what the family should do before and after the death of their loved ones and what they need to go and what they need to know. So the detailed guidelines in the books are, are are listed in the book. What are things you need to know? So let's go through some of them. Family members need to realize when the loved ones complete the last stage of their journey. Crying does not benefit anyone because um, 
traditionally, I mean, we always see people wailing loudly in a funeral parlor when their loved one pass away. This really comes from within, you know, the pain due to the pain of someone dying. Again, the person has really passed on, they will not come back. So um, you just weep quietly, but don't will loudly. So uh, being humans with emotions, it's natural to feel sad. But do not will loudly, just weep quietly because it will affect the deceased righteous mind to be reborn in pure land. Yeah, because uh, the sense of hearing of the deceased is the sharpest among all their other senses, even after they've passed on. The, the battle body is still inside the it's still inside the physical body. So if they hear you crying, they will not want to leave for a better realm. So with the help that the deceased, first don't cry. So second, we have to help the deceased to recall and remember by reciting the Buddha's name and mantra. So this is actually the best help to give to a loved one who have passed on. You have to tell them that your master is a living Buddha Lian Shen. You have to recite a uh, uh, the root guru's heart mantra, why do we need to remind them? Because when uh, when you pass on, uh, you're like in a dream. So once you remind them of this, to remember the three jewels, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, as well as the three fundamental roots, it will remind them So to help the body of your loved ones reach a better realm, you have to choose a quiet place to face this major moment of their life. For the place for chanting, it should not be noisy. Noisy environments are taboo. And if, if in a hospital, uh, family members can discuss in advance with the hospital to allow them to remain in the ward for eight hours to perform Tanching. I'll move the body onto a mobile bed so that a point death the body of the deceased can be built into another room to continue chanting. Um, so due to uh, different countries' conditions and regional hospital regulations, family members should express their wishes to um, the hospital um, in advance on their wish to do chanting or they can ask the funeral planner or hospital or even ask the hospital staff or social workers who are familiar in this aspect to help with this. Or you have contact the chanting group in advance to help you with the chanting. So we have to contact the chant. Of course, we have to contact the chanting groups in advance. Uh, it will have to depends on the on the current affinity. We know that uh, assistive chanting is very important, but sometimes it's just not possible to contact uh, someone, especially if a death happens in the middle of the night. And most of the time. Um, People, it's hard to contact anyone to help with chanting in the middle of the night because uh, that's the issue of safety to drive late in the night, in the dark night. Or, or if the distance is too far away, we will not um, accept um, the chanting in the middle of the night. So you must be mentally prepared. So if that's the case, uh, family members will have to rely on themselves. And if you are a true Buddha disciple, that will make it much easier. We cultivate. 
So if you don't know any uh, sadhana whatsoever, you can just, you can, you can use the machine that has the recorded names of uh, Buddhas. That's the easiest. And what happened is it, uh, and what happened is it said, we don't have a machine like this, especially for true Buddha disciples. We usually don't keep one of these machines at home. Uh, we should try our best to to keep to prepare to keep one of this machine at homes, or even the cultivation venues should uh, have these machines. So even if they don't have this machine that has the pre-recorded uh, names of the Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, we should tell them uh, how they could download um, MP3. So uh, for those who have what well, in WhatsApp chat group there's this uh, list of um, there's this list of uh, names of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas depending on uh, yeah it's in a what's you can pick this up from the WhatsApp chat group um, so it's best to find something that is like um, gentle because for chanting, in this cases, it should be just soft and gentle. So certain mantras may not be suitable because they may be too um, um, strong in that sense. So our family members also need to prepare what we call the three rebirth treasures with the vegetable sand, the nectar pill, and the rebirth blanket. So all this, uh, the cultivation vendors, uh, cultivation venues should have all these three items. Stuff, um, to arrange a memorial, to arrange uh, funeral arrangements in the um, funeral parlor. So if a professional funeral planner, they will, uh, they will know how to uh, do up, um, you know how to do up the, the, they will know how to do the setup. For example, you must have a tanka. And then the um, place should also be large enough to accommodate uh, the body of the deceased and also for the chanting group. And for those who pass on at home, um, the funeral may be held at home. So in a the hospital, there may not be ideals um, and it may not have an ideal place uh, for you to do assistive chanting as well. So it may not necessarily be um, doing the chanting in hospital. It could be elsewhere. So it depends on your local conditions. You um, cultivation venue should be familiar with what uh, the, familiar with the hospitals and maybe also the uh, places uh, where assistive chanting is possible. So you can also have um, small Buddha statues of tankas placed above the head of the deceased or other items of blessing like the amulets, prayer beads, mantra will, etc. Just above the head. So if the deceased um, has always been reciting the Buddha's uh, mantra, and he have other things like I mentioned, the amulets or some prayer beads that has been blessed by Grandmaster, you can place them above the head of the deceased at all. When, gentle reminder that when you're uh, playing uh, the machine with the recorded Buddha's name, please play it, play, uh, play it on low volume, all right, and put it beside the deceased. Okay, in principle, we shouldn't move the body for the first eight hours. Unless um, um, the person passed on at home. It, um, yeah, there's no need to ask. If you know the person has already passed on, no need to ask the hospital to uh, come to your house to resuscitate. Yeah. Because if you move the body around, um, 
Yeah, that's not so good. You have to try not to move it uh, for the first eight hours. And during the eight hours, uh, family members should try to stay by the side um, and, and guide him to tell him not to be fearful. And uh, beside the Buddha's mantra, I play the machine with the recorded Buddha's name. And also for the people who are handling the body, please ask them to go slow on the body. In Taiwan, uh, we follow the Taiwanese style would be, we always do it at home. The funeral, the wake will be held at home. If it's at home, um, if it's at home, um, you will probably have an altar with, um, uh, with um, statues, Buddhist statues. So some will do it in a funeral uh, palace. So in the past, most of the residents, uh, most people held their wigs in their own, own homes. So you, you, you will usually put the body in the um, the main hall of of the house. Because the body needs to be bar washed and change the clothes. And they will feel that it's quite disrespectful with duties in front of the gods. Um, so uh, that's the reason why they they cover the gods. They call it Jershen. Or covering the uh, covering the red, which is called zhe hong. So what they do is usually they will offer incense to inform the god and ancestors that they do not offer incense for the time being because a death has happened at home. And the statues of the gods or ancestors tablet will be covered by either a rice sieve or red paper. And you can only remove the sieve or the red paper after uh, after the entire funeral is over and the body has been removed. Uh, but in Buddhism, uh, we, we, don't, we don't need to uh, cover the gods or cover red. In fact, we hope that Buddhas and the Buddhas and Buddhist Savats will descend and guide the disease to pure land because when you cover the gods, it, it seems to be implying that uh, we do not wish for the Buddhas and Buddhists to bless and deliver the disease. Uh, rather, uh, we use something to block. We, we no longer... Uh, so in the hall, yeah, we use a partition to separate um, the shrine and, and, the, and the coffin so that you can do like the change clothes, wash the body and so on and so on. So we have the body in the main hall and the shrine has Buddhas and Bodhisattvas statues. There's no need to uh, cover the gods intentionally. So this is something that we came across in, in uh, Taiwan, especially you uh, hold the wake at home. So in if you hold the if you hold the wake and, and funeral in the funeral parlor, you won't have problems like this. Um, so according to traditional customs, it is said that if someone in the family dies at home because a body is if because a body is placed placed there, it is generally considered to be unclean and will clash with your neighbors. So therefore, the practice would be to pace uh, the door of your nearby neighbor uh, with a red piece of paper to prevent this negative energy from 
uh, clash, clashing with the neighbors. And then if you have a temple nearby, uh, if you have a temple near the monarch's house with a furnace of the heavenly God, uh, we call this Tian Gong, then the family have to use, have to wrap the furnace with a red cloth in order not to be distracted disrespectful to the gods. Of course, um, again, if it's in a, at a funeral parlor, we would have this problem of clashing. Um, so in order for a dying person to, um, in order for a dying person to pass on calmly and peacefully without any worries, um, family members, please remember the points be below. You have to ask them if there are any outstanding matters or worries in your mind and promise to try your best uh, to handle them. For example, who do you want to see? Uh, who do you want to want to want see before they die? So observe who and, who, and what you're concerned about in daily life. Uh, so I've really uh, encountered before that after this person see the person that they want to see, they they pass away not after seeing uh, the person. So you have to observe uh, what they're concerned about or worry about in their daily life, right? Um, of course, if it's someone that they don't like at all, Please don't allow any visits from the people that they dislike. At this point of time, it's quite crucial. And they also have to remind them of their virtuous deeds, the good actions they have performed during their during this lifetime. It's very important to have wholesome thoughts at a point of dying. So this will allow them to let go of attachments and mundane affinities. So you're always um, um, giving teachings to the dying. Uh, we should also give teachings to your parents. So even though we, we, we have to plan the funeral, but again, we are not their family members. We are not familiar with their loved ones. Uh, we, we can't uh we we can't we don't really know who they want to see what they want to do what what things they are worried about so at this point it's important for the family members to 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 find out to have this interaction with their parents uh, so usually sometimes after we give some teachings um some of these people who are dying might express their wishes, but some might not. And, um, after uh, um, being in a funeral uh, planning business, I, I, I realize it's not easy to have a wholesome death. So often I hear my uh, customers told me um, my father only had a minor illness and passed away shortly after being sent to the hospital. But again, and after I became a funeral planner, I also realized that people don't really die that easily. But very often we feel that because we have insurance, right, we will opt for emergency uh, treatment. So previously, uh, without the insurance, you would have died by then. So I ever asked a Dharma sister who runs the nursing home, uh, how, what is, who's, um, do you have, uh, she she told me that she cared for a client who died only after 21 years and lying on the bed for 21 years. I was a shock. I was shocked when I hear this. So personally for myself, uh, I have a case where a family member told me they've taken care of their fathers for 
for 19 years before he passed on from the time he became sick. So you can see that sometimes people don't die that easily. Um, the family members um, should avoid. The family members and relative should refrain from expressing their affectionate love, show reluctance on an impending departure, or shed tears for them. Uh, this will cause them to develop attachments and would dis disrupt their right mindfulness. So what we should do instead is to um, uh, stop emergency treatment, right? If they are really been diagnosed as being incurable, we should rather recite Buddha's name on behalf of the patient uh, to allow them to peacefully pass on. So when you do emergency treatment, this will only prolong a painful shot and undignified life. And in most hospitals, uh, will have regulations and medical directives on hospice care that focuses on the comfort and quality of life for the terminally for terminally ill patients. So the patient or the next of kin, um, or actually the doctors will actually uh, signal to us the patient may die soon. But if you did not sign a waiver, yeah, then the doctor might continue continue treatment because many feel that that's filial piety. But I think uh, things are different nowadays. So when a patient is still lucid, invite a reverend or a virtuous teacher to give Dharma teachings as soon as possible um, to generate affinity with Buddha and to generate joy. So when they are dying, but they see the sense of hearing, uh, so Christianity has such practices as well. I think they do a great job too. So when a Christian brother and sister is dying, they will be at their deathbed to pray for them. That's the Christian's way of doing it. Is, if it is determined that the patient's condition is incurable, it's best to discharge them from hospital and bring them home or to a quiet place where they can recite the Buddha's name as soon as possible. Um, so Taiwan is actually a home hospice ne network. Uh, there are many cancer cases. Um, the, when a dying person is in a lot of pain, right, the nurses can regularly come to the home to give morphine. They can actually... Uh, uh, dispense this dose at home. It is about waiting to pass on. Um, these are all very uh, Taiwanese centric, right? What I'm sharing. But um, the medical treatments are different globally. So it may not be possible to inject morphine uh, in some countries. So imagine you have a sick person at home who is in pain and having problem difficulty and cannot, cannot have morphine. Under such circumstances, you, you see their pain and yet you want to bring them home. I think the, the pressure of the family um, that the person will have to see this and to hear this is un unbearable. So under such conditions, you, you may not it may not be possible to bring the uh, it may not be possible to bring the family, uh, bring the dying home. Um, so okay, family members and relatives should chant the Buddha's name at their side and respectfully pray to the Buddhas and Buddhists to radiate light and blessings to guide the patient to pure land. 
Within eight hours after the death of a dying person, family members should not touch the body or hasten to wipe the body, or even change the clothes or transfer the body to a cold storage room. Um, as mentioned just now, because the deceased have just passed away, right? Um, the consciousness is still in the process, but detaching from the physical body, touching the body will hence cause them a lot of pain. So it's best for the family members and chanting groups to recite the Buddha's mantras that the deceased used to recite during their lifetime, something they're familiar with. So, so I've ever come across a case where um, um, I've, I've come across a client who uh, recite the medicine Buddha, medicine Buddha mantra. So use a mantra that um, the deceased is familiar with and you're using the machine with the recorded Buddha's name, you actually have a selection, selection to choose from. So this is something the cultivation venue must prepare. We, we can't just assume that they will just recite the um, Padma Kumara's uh, heart mantra. It should be something they are used to reciting in their daily practices. Yeah. And you can also find the MP3s that I mentioned of the Buddha's name and Buddhist um, in the chat group. So I mentioned that um, so there's a fellow disciple who mentioned that um, he is he's the chapter he's a chapter head of um, um, a golden mother of Jake Pond uh, Zi Hui chapter in Taiwan and when he passed on the family member asked, can I recite Golden Mother's mantra instead? And when we're doing the uh, the Dharma practices for the first seven, on the seventh day, we also add the, the um, mantra of Golden Mother to ask for uh, Golden Mother's blessing. Um, so in Sutra, in, in Sutra now, you know that that would not be possible, you know, the way they do it. This shows that through Buddha school, it's, um, we were able to integrate practices uh, of other, other uh, Buddhist faith. So we talk about ethical of life, it's not about, uh, it's not about just burial. Uh, so the 15th would be um, We have to perform Dharma riches for the deceased for 49 days after um, after their death It is best immediately to set up a simple memorial tablet of the three noble ones of the West to facilitate visualization and pray to the Buddha and British servants for guidance or blessings. So if they prepare the, the tankas or, or maybe images of grandmasters, and these are things that the cultivation venue should have. So of course, that they, they cannot be, uh, death will not um, happen every day. You can set, you can set aside um, these items which are for uh, for chanting and indicate clearly so that when when there's a need you can just quickly uh, grab and go of course we the cultivation venue will not be filling with um assistive chanting on a daily basis so uh during the 49 days at its best if family members can recite the sutra of the fundamental vows of kisitaba which is about 49 days and dedicate the merit of reciting the sutra to the deceased. Oh, so it's strange, right? Uh, on normal days when you when we ask to recite the sutras, we don't do it, but when a loved one passes along, we willingly recite this sutras. 
So we have to reconcile the concerns the deceased had when they were alive. So something that um uh what so we must try to resolve his major concerns as children if we can uh these are the last things we can do for our parents when they pass on. Um, so if an elderly person who dies in your sleep. Uh, so if someone who is very old and always not to be well, don't don't send to the hospital. Like I mentioned that, you know, um uh transferring back to and fro hospital, you know, you have you have missed the precious hours. So if you die at home, you have to report to the police. This is to confirm uh, that there is no suspicion of murder. So you have to observe the body when uh, doing chanting. Sorry, after reporting to the police, right, confirm there's no suspicion of murder. And you can you can start with the chanting, and then after you finish chanting, then uh, then you can move the body. So we have to pay attention to changes when uh, chanting because the weather may be too hot, or maybe during emergency treatment, uh, they've been. Uh, given too much, too many medicine, so the body might become bloated or might bleed. So at this point of time, don't insist. Uh, for example, a liver disease, the stomach will bloat, continue bloating, get bigger and bigger. So uh, the chanting group, they don't just close their eyes and just chant. They have to be very careful. They have to observe other changes to the body. So if your your body, the body continue to bloat, it might explode, and you see uh, bleeding from the body. You know, you know, um, especially when the weather is hot. In Taiwan. Uh, in Taiwan, last time we used to put dry ice beside um, the disease, the body, to lower the temperature. So, um, a counterpart and uh, funeral business told, told me that uh, you have to cool down the body quickly. So, but they were they were told that they are not supposed to move the body uh, the first twelve hours. So, what happened when it started doing chanting? The the body actually uh, bloat and exploded. I haven't seen this before, but someone shared the story with me. So, there was a person who actually died on the WC. And the family insists on not moving the whole body. <laughs> so everyone was staying by the side of the WC to, to chant. So for me, I would actually suggest the family to move the body to a certain place for chanting. So not only this, now by moving the place, is it could be better for um, the deceased and also better for the people to put a person up. For those who help the chanting, they would be in a better mood as well. So grandmaster's uh, father passed away. So grandmaster uh, blessed um, his father on the spot. And when master is about, well, grandmaster is about to leave. 
So on site, there were also a lot of reverends and masters and reverends. So the masters and reverends continued to chant for. So Grandma said, I told them, I've done my job. There's, there's no need for you to stay. So uh, the good thing always is a, it's a concept. Yeah, because grandmaster told them, I've already uh, delivered him. There's no need for you to stay. So it's just a guy that eight hours is a guy. So if through certain ways, we know that the soul has really left the physical body, the bado has really left the physical body. And there's a non two Buddha school, two Buddha disciple. He could actually saw his father's body leaving the physical body and sitting beside him. And he could have even see where his father was standing. So in the Buddhist scriptures, sorry, in the Buddhist scriptures, liberation of the Bada body is also mentioned. For example, in the Sutra of the Fundamental Vows of Kistigaba. When such a man or woman of Jambat Vipa is on the verge of death, his consciousness is confused and deemed he's unable to distinguish between good and evil and his eyes and ears unable to see and hear. His relatives should then make great offerings, recite the uh, sacred sutras and recite the names of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Such wholesome conditions can cause the departed ones to keep away from the lower realms and the demons and ghosts will withdraw and disperse. So I'm going to just um, try to post this. Um, and then we're on it once all sentient beings when approaching the end of life, they hear one Buddha's names, one Bodhisattva's name or Mahayan Sutra, even the phrase or verse. In my observation, such beings, those committed the five heinous crimes of great violations, killing and harming, and those who commit minor evil deeds and are supposed to fall into the lower realms, will probably be liberated from descending into the evil path. Mm, so the sutra highlights the most living beings at the state of delirium at the end of their lives. Um, it, also, it is, I've missed the last slide, um, but you can pick up this, pick this up from the WhatsApp group. I will try to post this later in the chat group. So it is about crossing the ocean of life and death. Living religion also helped the sutra, the fundamental vows of kissing which is of a high esteem. Why? Because it's beneficial to both the living and the deceased. And this sutra was actually expounded by Shakyamuni Buddha in Trayastrimsa, heaven for Queen Maya. Not only does this sutra save beings in the little world, but also beings from the six realms. After the Mahaparinirvana of Shakyamuni Buddha and before Matriyana Buddha comes into being, Kistigaba Buddha, Bodhisattva showed the heavy responsibility entrusted by the Buddha to save all sentient beings. So, among other things, Living Buddha Lianshan pointed what is the important teaching in the Sutra. You have to good, do good deeds on behalf of the deceased and cultivate practices on behalf of the deceased. Recite sutras as well on their behalf. Recite the Buddha's name and sutra. You can hand a banner or canopy or present incense or flowers in veneration to the images of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, recite the secret sutras, even a simple sentence of verse and burn incense as an offering. So this book, Crossing the Ocean of Life and Death, is, an, is a reminder of the importance of practicing Dharma for the liberation of the Bada, Bada body by the living Buddha, Lenshan. All right? So as a as a demo propagator of a fellow disciple, you're always helping others with chanting. Actually, you can go into the... Um, Cold storage quite quickly, but because you have to recite for eight hours. So don't let this don't let uh, leave all the session to the to the funeral planner. 
but if it's aligned with your uh, chanting process, your sixties chanting process, it is possible to integrate this to the processes of a funeral. So um, I've come across a client who who told me, a uh, Dharma sister told me, the mother has told her that she has, if after her death, she has to contact uh, teacher Wu Zizai. So in my experience, um, Tainan, so this, uh, this Xiaoyang Sijie, uh, it's, it's a little bit, Oh, so China is quite far out uh, from the other um, venues, Katowice venues. So we, we have, however, a lot of uh, fellow disciples from other parts of Taiwan came to help the chanting. And I can see from her face that she has a very um, uh, peaceful and smiley demeanor on her face because um, when she was alive, she helped a lot of fellow disciples um, and funeral planning. So upon hearing their death, a lot of fellow disciples dropped everything on their hand and came to help and help help uh, with the chanting during her, during her funeral. So when, uh, when, when her body was cremated, she has a lot of uh, sariras on the skull uh, that came from her skull. Uh, so we should have a living will, you know, to, to inform your family of your wishes. So I think that's all for today's class. Um, There's a check, checklist for funeral planning, which have also... Um, which I've also put in the uh, WhatsApp chat group. So this is a very good chat list. Uh, for example, we'll tell them uh, what are the items that you should prepare, like the photo, uh, a change of clothes, his... Um, a death certificate, and for chanting, who should we look for? Who should we look for? And you must have a rebirth blanket. So, so cultivation venue should actually provide this um, to fellow disciples so that they feel more at ease. <laughs> so that's all for class today. So let, let me hand uh, the mic back to our uh, MC. Thank you, uh, Teacher Wu Zizai, for ex exciting uh, explanation. I'm sure everyone has benefited from the teaching. Now it's a Q&A session. Let's have DA um, Mia. So in Malaysia, uh, after two hours, uh, the body of the deceased will be placed in the cold storage. So the golden eight hours, the opportunity to do chanting within the golden eight hours is very small. And the rebirth, uh, Sunisa Jaya blanket will only be covered on will only be um, covered on the body after the funeral parlor has prepared the body. Uh, the effects still the same. So it depends because country conditions are different. This part I would suggest that at the very first instant, if the family members are beside, it's best to put the reverb, put the reverb blanket um, on the body. You have to communicate, communicate this in advance with the hospital staff. Like, for example, if not around, can you please cover the body with the blanket? Second is to send 
the request to deliver the disease to um, written quarters. And if you are doing reciting, sutras, mantra, do merits dedication to the disease, whether you're at a cultivation venue or whatever. Of course, what's the effect? <laughs> so to, to say are the effects with the, would it be equally effective this way so we're like must that part or leave it to the master defer to the master to answer the question Amitabha for the clothing to be worn by the disease are there any special <clears throat> special instructions or must it be something that is um inherited from true Buddha school. In addition, um, uh, okay, in Taiwan, there's actually a, a rebirth hat, of which is, has been blessed by Grandmaster, which allows the bado to um, to exit from the crown chakra. When we bury, during barrier, if he has taken the Bodhisattva vow, I mean, as in when it's being placed in the the coffin, um, if he has taken the Bodhisattva vows, you have to let him wear the. <clears throat> The shawl, the priest of vow, the ropes, the ropes, the body, the ropes. Uh, for someone who's taken the Buddhist of vow, the brown color. If a disease is uh, cultivated, you maybe have to put um, the sutra inside the coffin. Uh, Gosh, I think I missed something. I missed something. Yeah. Um, so again, they say, should you put um, preservation, the formidine um, for the body? So I think it depends on uh, the conditions in, in, in different countries. If possible, leave it till eight hours later. <laughs> So this question about uh, whether it be clashes if during the uh, during the wake period people gamble, drink, uh, whether there be any clashes, I think there's something that's disrespectful to the disease. So if this is something disrespectful, we shouldn't do it. This is almost similar to the... Uh, so this is similar to the question before. It asks about whether during the week, if you okay. so, like we, uh, this talk about smoking and using drugs um, during the week, but again, the answer is the same as long as those acts, those actions are disrespectful to the disease. We should refrain from doing them at all. So when you talk about chanting, when you talk about chanting, you're talking about <clears throat> uh, you're talking about chanting the Buddha's name. While talking, there are two ways, and also um, guiding them to uh, the Dharma of uh, liberation of the Dharma liberation of the body body during. Um, during time. So if we can put two together, that's the best. <clears throat> so one is a one is a liberation teaching, one is chanting the Buddha's name. So during chanting, um, so many, many fellow disciples um, have some taboos that they don't dare to come to help. So this, um, <clears throat> so this all boils down to educating um, fellow disciples on this. 
So you have someone who loves to do excessive chanting. When he, someone may feel that by doing chanting, they are helping the deceased. So, so there are some who say they want to help, but they don't have transport. So what can we do? So this is the part that I've mentioned before. If it's your own family members, you can't you can't find anyone to help you with the chanting. You have to do it yourself. <clears throat> so, uh, fellow disciples can help you to transmit some facts um, to to room quarters for grandmaster to deliver the deceased. Sometimes it's quite difficult to do uh, chanting because you need at least eight hours. So if you could even do a practice at the um, cultivation venue and uh, dedicate merits to um, the person who has passed on, that's, that's good. Mm. So if an emergency case, we have just only two and three hours to chanting, uh, we should actually prepare before the time comes. <laughs> Sometimes when someone passes on, the first thing they do is to run home to bring clothes for, uh, to bring a change of clothes for the, the deceased. So we have to prepare all this well uh, beforehand. So um, if someone has already signed an agreement to donate his organs during the golden eight hours, how should we deal with this? For this part, Grandmaster has uh, mentioned before, because what we want to stress is what we want to emphasize is don't touch the body during the first eight hours. But when you, but when you talk about this uh, organ donation, it has to be removed in the shortest possible time, so it has to be fresh. What if we sign? Uh, some people say it will probably create very great pain for the, the deceased because your other body has not left the physical body. But if you have um, uh, aspired such a, a big vow, Grandma says mentioned that you will be delivered immediately in this case. You don't have to wait for eight hours. So, so in this, this agreement to sign, this organs donation agreement it is highly supported by the true Buddha school. So the Buddhas and Buddhists will not let you feel pain when you die, if you have decided to, to donate our organs. <clears throat> Can't we um, play the Kisitagaba Sutra recited by Grandmaster? Will that be good? during the eight hours. Yes, that'll be great. I do have the MP3 file, uh, but the best would be you could recite it yourself. I would like to ask the body of the deceased have really turned hard, has really hardened. So if before, um, the person passed on, I've really bought a new pair of shoes. How do I, how could I wear it on? So if you can't, um, you can't. Usually if, if the body has really hardened, wearing the shoes will usually pose no problems. But if you really can't, just put it by his side. Uh, at the beginning, after the person has passed on, it will pardon, but gradually it will actually soften a bit. Because don't forget, we still have to change. So we can change the clothes. Um, if we can change the clothes, then uh, wearing the shoes shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, for the shoes, usually, you know, some parts are glued together. So when it's cremated, it may become gray ashes. So we will suggest not to use leather shoes or shoes with glow 
we just used uh, the shoes um, meant for funeral usage. But if you really like the pair of, either this is really like a pair of shoes and you can't wear it. So what you can do, you can just put the shoes inside the coffin. That's all. Can we have the sadhanas of the ritual for the 49 days? So can the family execute, can, I ex, ex, can a family conduct the um, 49 days ritual and at home? I will talk about this in a later class, in the next class. We can talk, we will be talking about the different practices during the 49 days. This will be covered in the next lesson. But Sadhana, I think it's available in True Buddha School. What I want to stress for this in this Sadhana is the offerings. So the offerings will be a little bit special. You can prepare the ordinary, ordinary offerings. So what's different um, from the other conventional funeral uh, ritual? I think I was Sadhana is different. Their offerings may be different. So the cultivation venue should also be aware of these differences. And because they have to help uh, the family members to prepare them. Because family members can't reside at home. But family members as long as must know how to do. So most of the true Buddha disciples we stress or cultivate diligently. We talk, uh, this question is about sky burial, whereby the body is being chopped up. Uh, will the disease be painful? Um, teacher answered that maybe after eight hours, it should there shouldn't be no pain. So if that's pain, it's probably because of um, karma manifesting. It's unwholesome karma manifesting. That's why he feels me. That's my opinion. So maybe Master can um, can add on to this question. Oh, this, this question has been answered, so we'll move to the next one. <clears throat> so this question is about if we do chanting or end of life care, do we need to follow any true Buddha, uh, true Buddha ritual? So the first seven parts of the sadhana. Also, the, the we have to cover the prelim practice, the prelim section, and after that we have the. Then after that, we would do um, the end of life um, teaching, and then the ending section of the sadhana. It, it will be the same as our standard sadhana. The part about, uh, so, so the, the family members may not be familiar with sadhanas, but the important part at the and then and then at the any section is important for them to recite the Buddha's name. Get the family members to recite it together. Because they will they will be reciting <clears throat> the names of many Buddhas. So we can say that we've been chanting the Buddha's name for so long. Um Let's dedicate all merits of reciting the sutras and um, the Buddha's name, Buddha's sutras and mantras to to the deceased, and that um, the grandmaster and the grandmaster will guide and um, <clears throat> deliver the disease to the pure land. So we will use more. Um, um, <clears throat> We can use more simple terms to explain to them. Yeah. 
呃，以下的问题，我们将在我们生命里 WhatsApp 的群组里面由授课导师为我们一一的解答。非常感谢我们今天的授课导师。Some of the questions will be answered in the WhatsApp group. Ah,、uh, Chang'e teacher was there for <coughs> such detailed explanation. I'm sure. Um. Next week, we will be Siop Chapter Four, Lesson Two. We'll be talking about、um, the benefits of、uh, doing merits for accumulating merits for the disease. We hope that everyone will join us for the class for next week. Let's take a group photo together. Please turn on the video. We have many people today, about two hundred fifty people. So I'll do a countdown to take the photo. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, Teacher Wu Zizai, and thank you, Master Lin He, and all masters, senior reverends, reverends, dharma instructor, dharma sisters. <clears throat> Would like to thank our translators, myself, and a translator from Indonesia, the Dhamma instructors, Billy, <clears throat>、um, and also、um, the Master Lian Fei for leading the translation team in Bahasa Indonesia, and Master and Senior Reverend、uh, Lian Wu for leading the English translation group. I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you all. Masters, senior reverends, reverends, dhamma instructors, dhamma assistants online, and all fellow disciples from all over the world. Thank you. See you next week. Goodbye. 请大家打开麦克风，跟上师授课。老师跟大家说再见。谢谢吴老师，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢老师，谢谢上师，谢谢大家。晚安，谢谢晚安，谢谢小虎，谢谢吴志在的，拜拜，谢谢吴志老师，谢谢，下周见，拜拜，拜拜，下周见，拜拜。拜拜，拜拜，大家。阿弥陀佛，有一些还没有回答的啊，请大家留意我们的群组，或者是下个星期，好吗？拜拜，感恩，拜拜，爱你啊！好厉害哦！我都被你的手，太厉害了，爱你啊！爱你。嗯，老师，老师也也来一个爱你哦。<笑><笑>我不太会<笑>，<笑>也是很很像了，这就是这样子。好的，谢谢大家，对对对拜拜，拜拜，谢谢老师，谢谢，大家晚安，早安，晚安，晚安，晚安，晚安，晚安，晚安，晚安，拜拜，拜拜，拜拜，谢谢，晚安，谢谢。谢谢，拜拜。谢谢，拜拜。谢谢，拜拜。拜拜。拜拜。